Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you're having a great Friday afternoon, and I hope you guys tune in in about five hours from now for our live stream at 9 o'clock Eastern where we'll be talking about what else, the Dallas Cowboys. And there's always so much that's going on that um, it's literally a full-time job just keeping up with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, and right now, we know that as of about four hours ago, that um, Jason Peters was meeting with Jerry Jones. No word how that meeting went, but I guess we can say um, no news is good news. That um, I don't know that Jason Peters has any other offers on the table. I don't know how bad he really wants to play. Um, what we do know is Jerry Jones is a master closer. He had his physical this morning. And have evidently passed, so it's just a matter of, I guess, can they hammer out a deal? Um, what's clear is, and a bunch of you are worried, oh, he's going to be a starter, we're going to have a 40-year-old. No, understand, he is our swing tackle. And he can possibly play some guard, too. Now, forgive me, I'm a little sweaty here because I've been outside working on the outdoor studio, getting it ready, because... Six days, four hours, three minutes exactly from right now is the kickoff of the season. And I want to be ready because we're going to have some people over here. We're going to have our game day watch party starting at 1 o'clock uh, on Sunday. So I'm hoping, excuse me, 1230 starting on Sunday Eastern. And we'll be going the whole day through every game. So tune in for that. Anyway, back to where I was. I'm sorry, I digress. <sighs> Tyler Smith is our starting left tackle. Like it or not, that's where we are. And you can be mad at the Joneses for not planning accordingly for Tyron Smith not being there. In fact, this is what Jerry Jones said about Tyler Smith. Um, he said, we will have growing pains with left tackle Tyler Smith. Do I wish we had Tyron? Yes. Will we get Tyron back? Likely. Tyler will come in, get a Harvard degree in playing uh, Dury in playing left tackle. We will pay the price for it. Yes. Can we win some win with the uh, pay by paying the price? I think so. Yes. Well, and this is why you end up having a guy like Jason Peters that can back him up. If he fails or needs to get, you know, step back some, you can put in a veteran and end up taking the place to help you out. If somebody else gets hurt, you can go through, you can plug him in a guard or either the tackle positions and things like that. Again, we don't know how it's working, if it's working, if he's going to leave here or not, if he's going to have a contract and start working out. We just don't know. If he is brought on the team, understand he will start out on the practice squad and they will ramp him up slowly to get him up to speed. He won't be ready for week one. I do not think so. Not with a, you know, a little over a week to go. It just won't happen. But here's the thing that's interesting. And I pointed out last night, uh, someone shared with me that the Jacksonville Jaguars over, and I can't remember how long of a period it was, but the Jacksonville Jaguars, whatever that period was, spent more money on free agents than anybody else. $1.6 billion. And during that time, they lost more games than anybody else. Think about that for a second. So as we listen to the Eagles that are constantly signing people left and right, left and right, you know, we've got literally the all-star team for Miles Sanders, who literally just got back on the practice field yesterday. We can be envious of that, but there's no guarantee that that's going to work. And I would say with today's NFL, where there's so few practices, bringing somebody in now, there's going to be a learning curve that's going to slow them down at becoming productive. And if you're talking about putting in a safety or a cornerback, if one of those guys are in the wrong position, you're talking about a big play being made on you. So that's the reality of it. But I want to tell you something here because, see, it, we're going to find out something. We're going to find out by the end of the season. We're going to find out if what the Eagles did is the right way or what the Cowboys are doing is the right way. Now, think about this for a second. The Dallas Cowboys last year didn't. In fact, the Cowboys have never signed big-name free agents. But in the course of the last eight years, they've won their division four times. Now, granted, the Eagles did win the Super Bowl one of those years. They're first in the history of Super Bowls. But be that as it may, they didn't sign big-name free agents last year 
and they ended up winning the division and sweeping the division at 12 and 5. The year before, the Cowboys said, let's sign these veterans. We signed Clinton Haha Dix, a guy who had been a starter for the Bears in Washington. We signed Gerald McCoy, an outstanding player at Tampa Bay. We signed Don Terry Poe, a big guy in the middle who had played really good in some stops. And we signed um, Everson Griffin, a guy who was a standout for the Minnesota Vikings. You look at that and say that was for guys that have started and played a lot of valuable minutes for a lot of teams. Hmm, That's some good players. The reality is not a single one of them did a damn thing for us. Now, quietly, something has happened with the Dallas Cowboys right in front of your eyes, and nobody's really talking about it much. But the Cowboys... I believe I, I, this is. I hate to say this, but I think um, maybe Tyron Smith comes back and plays a few games at the end of the season. Maybe, but I think the reality is Tyron Smith will be gone. This will be the last year that we will see Tyron Smith in a Cowboys jersey. It's cap number seventeen million dollars, and we're now talking about a guy who 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and now twenty two. He's missed a lot of time. And we're talking about probably 12 games at least minimum this year, five games last year, and 14 the year before. That error sadly is gone. And unless the Cowboys win a ring this year, he'll be another Cowboy great that'll go out without a ring. But here's the thing the Cowboys have turned over the whole roster. The Cowboys have gone from being one of those older teams. You know, with the Sean Lees and the Jason Wittens and, you know, uh, the LP Lossamans and things. And now, believe it or not, let me show you this. This is actually kind of amazing. I I was thinking this, but Philly Voice, I have to give a shout out to Philly Voice. Uh, They did this. They actually did the work for me. But here's what you have to look at. The Dallas Cowboys are now one of the youngest teams in the NFL. Look at that. So when you look at this up here, I don't know if you can see my, I guess you can't see the cursor up here. But when you look at this, the Browns currently are the youngest where their average age is 25 years old. Um, They have been trending. I mean, they've been hanging from 25, uh, four and hanging right around there. They've, They've stayed a young team. The Lions, of course, which is a team, you know, good old hard knocks and stuff, is a very young team, too, at 25.1. And they have, you know, growing pains and stuff. They, they actually played last year. Their record wasn't indicative of the way they played. They are just a team that needs to learn how to win. They honestly do because they literally were in one-score games almost every single week, it seemed like. And if the Eagles are sleeping on those guys, they're making a mistake. But here's what's crazy. So the Cowboys in 2018 was 25.4, then 2019 were 26.3. We've steadily been going down younger since 2019. Our average age is 25.2 years old. And I say this because this is actually a great thing because not only are we young, we are very, very young. And you think about a guy like Diggs, this is only his third year. You think of a guy like Micah Parsons. This is his second year. You think of a guy like C.D. Lamb. This is his third year. Tyler Biotis, it's his third year. Terrence uh, Steele, third year. You have all of these guys that are young that are still on their rookie contracts. Eventually, a couple years, they're going to have to get paid. But see, here's the great thing about this is you can take these young guys. They're in your system. You know, most of the people on your defense were there last year. So now they pick up more and more of the subtleties of your defense and learn it more and more. Come next year, they're going to know it even better. Now it sucks to lose Tyron Smith. But see, now you're getting young guys that are getting experience. And see, this is the difference of, say, some of the other teams that have young players. The Cowboys have a lot of young players, but they also have a lot of playing experience. And this is what's going to bode well for the Cowboys, not only this year, but going forward. And yes, there will be growing pains on this team because the team is so young. But with youth, you get a couple of things. 
One, you're stronger and faster, generally younger. Two, you don't have all the injuries that are there. Three, you're more malleable because you're not set in your ways. You are more apt to be coachable. Four, you recover faster. All these, oh, five, because you're a rookie and young, you're not getting the buku money just yet. And this is what the Cowboys have actually done, which is actually a great thing. And they've done it quietly where it seems like nobody's even noticed. On the flip side, as we look down the list, the oldest team, Tampa Bay, with an average age of 27.1. Now, maybe that's a little skewed because Tom Brady's 45, but they are a very old team. Anyway, we'll keep word out and look for Jason Peters. If anything happens, we'll be sure to bring it to you. In the meantime, I got a couple of flats of plants out there I need to go plant. Go plant them and make that place look nice. And as always, I appreciate you guys. I don't often watch Eagle channels, but when I do, I watch Philly 500, so I can die. Follow the Joker.